by the way, and Grandy, maybe you know this. What what was the basis of Larry Bear's public comments today with regard to Rennell? Was it like like why he was talking? Yeah, yeah. Why was he at a podium talking? I'm not 100 percent sure. Okay. Um. Anyway, he was, and um, in that conversation, Larry was asked about the Rennell Brooks Moon situation, and there were a couple interesting things that came out of it. Here it is. Uh, she's an icon. She's been an inspirational voice for generations of players, fans, and ambassador for the Giants. Her legacy will be honored by naming the booth, the A booth, uh, for her. We're going to do that at a game. Rennell is truly a forever Giant, and um, and uh, she is a San Francisco Giants icon. We're going to start our search for a new PA announcer uh, soon, and understand the process will require time because she is a legend and is going to be very, very tough shoes to fill. Uh, so in the meantime, we'll have a rotating uh, voices uh, into the immediate future. They'll be in the PA booth. Okay. I'm pretty sure he meant game announcer. Just saying. <laughs> I'm, I'm 99% sure he meant game announcer. So rotating? Yes. So there'll be a little bit of crook and kipe and then maybe <laughs> some other people. Stop. I mean, you talk about PA announcers. Mm -hmm. The way the Giants like to do it is is that if they're going to replace a legend, they're going to see public feedback on who you like. So they'll probably go with three or four PA announcers okay, and then take a survey with season ticket holders and who do you like. And then once they start to see the feedback is, oh, we like this one, they'll hire that one full time. Yeah, okay. I'm just saying that's what he laid out there. Look, I mean, there's... But I'm pretty sure he meant game announcer. Maybe he didn't. Game. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I yes. <laughs> I'd be fine with whoever. Whatever. Yes. Whatever. Welcome to San Francisco. Whatever. That should just be our slogan. It's fine. No, I, I like, I get what you're saying, and there are two very clear aspects to this, and I want to, I don't want to dismiss people that go, why is this such a big deal? It's the public address announcer. And I will respond to that every time by saying, tell me you're not, tell me you don't understand Giants baseball without telling me that you don't understand Giants baseball. So, Rennell is a big deal. Of course. Um, but when you talk about it in this form, I it's like, I'm not going to get hot and bothered that you're going to have four different people rotating for the first month of the season. That's fine. That's fine. Like, that's not... That's not the end of the world. It's smart. You don't want to shove somebody down I, Giants fans' throat, and they're I like, guess. oh, my God, we hired this guy or this girl to a three-year contract, and ugh. How are you getting this feedback? Those are big shoes to fill. How are you getting this feedback? You're doing focus group with season ticket holders? Yeah, just ask them. Okay. And, okay. and the one thing I will say about Renell publicly, she's one of my best friends, like around in San Francisco, Northern California. I did pregame shows with her for a year, my first television ever. I did, I did the first segment on the stool in front of the Giants dugout with Bip Roberts and her, and it was my turn to talk. We went to commercial break and had a blackout moment. I had no idea what I said, and I turned to Rennell and I said, what did I say? And she goes, oh, sweetie, you were great. <laughs> and she's been that person in my life since then, and this she's, is 2006. She's been the, oh, sweetie, you're great. Great hugs at the ballpark all the time. She's a dear friend of mine. It was a sad day for me, uh, and I think it was a sad day for all Giants fans. Yes. That said... I've been back for two years now, and I see Rennell at the ballpark every day, and she has not been happy. She was just not happy. And I, she would tell me reasons why that are not for public knowledge, and she just was a disgruntled employee. She was not happy. She was always upset, and I had never seen her like that before I went back to the East Coast. I was like, are you okay? And she'd be like, oh, this, this, and this, 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 and this, and I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, and she was not happy. Yeah. So, what? Maybe this is better for her. That that she's going to miss it. We've been messaging yeah. since this happened. I don't think she she's thinks, telling me yeah. she's going to move because she can't be around here anymore. Yeah, and she doesn't want to be. I don't. I don't think that that she feels right now like this is going to be. Better. No, no, she's grieving. Yeah. and we've talked, and it's I love you, I love you, and hearts emojis, yeah. and we're yeah. texting, and 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 I understand what she's going through, but maybe the the every day of what she was going through from a personal standpoint and being that person that I had never seen before, it's going to lighten the load. Well, And she'll get back to the Rennell that's not 
unhappy about a situation. Yeah, but maybe I'm sticking my nose where it doesn't belong. I, I do want to know, and I'm not asking you right now because I know some of the reasons. I, I do want it somehow addressed or the world to know what those things were that upset her. Well, because, I, because, because a lot of them are fair. And, and, and my question is, I'm listening to Larry Bear talk, and I don't even know what the basis of this press gathering was or if he took questions or whatever. Sounds like a season ticket holder event or something in spring training like, where somebody said, hey, what happened with Ronaldo? Yeah. And he just addressed it, and there okay. was a microphone there. Okay. It sounded like it was like... In a tin can? In his basement. Yeah. I mean, but my question is, why? Like, listen to, again, what Larry said. Well, she's a legend. We're going to name the booth after her. It's really hard to replace her. Can't do that. So why? 24 years is a long time in one place. And yes. sometimes when you're at a place for a long time, whether it's Dusty Baker as the manager for 10 years, whether it's Rennell as the PA announcer, you know everything about an organization. You know a lot. And you can, you can become unhappy with your situation. I totally get it. Right? You've been somewhere somewhere so long, you're like, this guy's a jerk, this guy's a jerk, this guy's great, this guy sucks, this guy's awesome. You know where all the bodies are buried and you just, you're someplace for a long time and you become a disgruntled employee. I'm not saying she was, but like she, she was a, she was not happy, and she made that clear Yes, to a lot of people right. that she wasn't happy. But I'm still stuck on the things that made her unhappy, number one. And number two, if you're going to go down the road of, hey, uh, it's been a long time, it, th- this just isn't connected anymore, we got to move on, then don't put out a press release that says mutual and amicable. Like, that's my issue here. It's not, look, people... Dude, press releases are... Come on. But don't do it. Dude, Otani's... It's disrespectful. O- Otani's translator stole the money from him in the press release. Right. And we all know that it's a bunch of BS. Right. So press so releases gonna, are press releases. So that's what I'm going to say then. I'm not I'm not telling you that I'm going to boycott the Giants or let's, anything crazy. Let, let's just put this scenario out there. And I have no knowledge other than I know Rennell was unhappy. And I, I think that's anybody that talked to her knows that. That if you're unhappy in a place and your contract is up, your take could be, well, if I'm going to stay here and put up with this, I'm going to ask for this. And then maybe the other side of that is, well, we're not going to pay you that. And we also know that you're upset and you're telling everybody you're upset. I mean, there's, I don't know what went on in the negotiations, but I'm, I'm the camp mark in every sort of, scenario where I want to I want to hear or think of or be empathetic to both sides of the story because we you and I have been talking off air we've all been through things in our personal lives sure, where sure. there's two sides to every story so the side that I know is a Giants fan and a friend of Rennell is I'm going to miss her I'm going to miss seeing her at the ballpark every day no I'm going to miss hearing her voice no doubt I'm going to miss seeing her more than miss hearing her voice I love her voice she's amazing the booming voice she's incredible and I will miss that part. I don't know what happened behind closed doors. I have no idea. I'm not privy to that. I can speculate based on some things that she told me, but like, that's not healthy either. Like, I'm just sad. My take here is I'm just sad she's not going to be there this year. And I think most Giants fans would agree. I think that's all of our take. However, I also still am at a spot where, especially when it comes to organizations I care about, uh, I don't only care about the final result or even the reason behind it. I care about the way you handled it. I just do. Maybe that's just me. I care about the way you handle things. Um, Let's look at, talk about baseball. We do this all the time. We've had shows about the way they handled J.D. Davis, the way they handled Brandon Crawford, the way that certain high ups in the Giants organization have come out and publicly stated that free agents don't want to come here because of San Francisco and the narrative around the city. And we've we've talked about that. How do you handle the J.D. Davis thing better? Tell um, me. Well, that one, that one doesn't bother me that much. Because my knee jerk to that was if, if I'm the agent, I have to set, I have to lay this all out for J.D. Like, hey, if we go to arbitration and we go to court and we win, your money may not be guaranteed if you get released. And there's this guy named Matt Chapman. His name's been thrown around all winter. 
He's I'm, really good friends with the manager. There's a good chance they sign him and you don't have a job. So if we go to arbitration and win, you might get $1 million of your $6.9 million. Or we can take the 6.3 that the Giants offered and just be okay with that. Now that's guaranteed. I'm totally with you. So I don't, I don't know how the Giants could have handled that any better. If there's not a spot for J.D., they tried to trade him. There was no takers because now it's 6.9 that I got to take on to my payroll. That that that's on the that's on those guys. As much as I love JD, like if if that if that scenario was painted out for me and I said screw it, let's go to court and let's win, then that's on me as the player. I get it, and that's on the agent if he didn't paint that picture for I'm him. I'm with you. That, I'm so with you. I don't. If, my only if you concern, want to release a guy as any team, you can release a guy. I it's, understand it's a, it's that. And, and I, uh, totally. And there's no way around that. And I'm and not I, defending them because I don't think they need no, to be No, I don't defended. think they need to be defended either. I'm simply saying, though, that there were conversations, uh, you know, voices in the room, players who did not want to be identified, who think that this played really poorly around the game, and that's something that takes some care. Well, there's some players that are throwing the collusion word around right yeah, now, and, based on how free agency went this but, year. So whenever ownership, it, it seems they screw one of us, then players are going to talk. But but to me, you, that's a no-brainer, right? I agree with you. Here's 6.3 guaranteed. My biggest issue was, th was this. JD's, JD's agent came out and said, I've never had business done with this this way in my life. They gave us the offer 45 minutes before the hearing. And I was like, how long does it take you to say the word yes? It doesn't take 45 minutes. Mike Rizzo used to tell players in D.C., he goes, you can go to arbitration, but we are undefeated. So good luck. Yep. Or we can just negotiate right now. Like, say yes. Say yes. You, you took a gamble to try to make another half mil, and you knew that you could lose four. And he did. I, I, don't, so my, do you, I don't know if he knew, dude. Uh, he Come said on, he who, did. Who makes that decision? He and his agent said he did, but maybe they just didn't want egg on their face. I really don't know. And I'm simply using that as an example where there has been discussion about it. The one that got me going over the last year has been... Rennell. The, no, well, yes, but I'm talking about it prior to the Rennell thing, has been the fact that the Giants, seemingly knowingly, whether it was true or not, and I have no reason to believe it's not true, but they, they decided strategically to go public with the idea that players don't want to come here because of the city. And then they signed three big free agents in four weeks. So it's like, well, what are we doing here? It felt to me like there were two really negative things that come from that. First of all, you disenfranchise your fan base because we all live here and we love this city, even though we acknowledge its warts and the problems it's going through right now. So please... Stop with the inferiority complex that's being thrown at your own fans. Second thing is, is I think it makes it real. And there might have been players who didn't even think about any issues going to San Francisco. And now they're like, am I supposed to not want to go to San Francisco? Do I need to worry about this? I love what Blake Snell said. I mean, Logan Webb and Matt Chapman have gotten to come out and publicly fight for this city, which is beautiful. But Blake Snell's the one who really had the answer that y'all should be listening to. Hey, folks, I don't give a rip where the hell I play. I'm a ball player. We're going to be in every city, 60 feet, 6 inches. Give me a ball. I don't even know where I am right now. <laughs> and, I make, true. and I make $31 million. So no matter what city I live in, I'm pretty sure I can find a safe spot. It's true. That's the answer. And I wanted the Giants... And Buster Posey to say that last year. So it matters to me the way you go about doing what you do. You know, the worst takes on the city are people that have never been to the city exactly. or hear things about the city or don't live in the city. Of, of, of course. I'm trying to get friends from back east to come out and they're like, oh, how is it? I'm like, it's fine. Dude, my parents have had, they live in Orange County now. They've retired. And I'm like, is it yeah, as bad as everybody right. Says? I park and I walk to work. Oh, <gasps> you walk to work, and now you have the night show. It's after six o'clock. Are you going to be okay? I'm going to be okay, Mom. You raised me here. You lived here. You were born in this city. You lived on Forty Second. What are you talking about, Mom? Turn the news off, please. I right? used, I used to walk uh, a mile and a half home from the night show every night. I was fine. You just head shoot them. You just head shoot them. You got to head. They're going for your brains. 
and they want to eat your brains. So you just got to head shoot them on the way home. Or just uh, run because they, 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 run, run. they run straight yeah. lines and they can't zigzag. Yeah. So what I would do is zigzag down the Embarcadero and yep. that would throw them all off if I missed the headshot. Right. So it's just, it's nothing. It's not... I the, just, the perception I, is worse than the reality, and the reality ain't great. I, like, let's be honest. I just carry excessively large water bottles. Like, I don't have one of those stupid Stanley cups, but I, I, I have a huge coffee mug, and I'm just like, I'm gonna whack you in the head. Zombies are straight liners, dude. If yeah. you zigzag, they have it. Just throws them for a loop. And, and I do. I don't even use the crosswalks. Yeah, I've learned the whole algorithm. I know when the cars are coming and when they're not. I know I'm where they hide. Cross the street, where the hell I want to cross the Downwind, street. Downwind, they can smell you. It depends which way the, the wind is blowing on the ferry building at the top of the clock tower. If you're downwind, you got to be a little more creative because they can smell you coming. If it was time to move on from Rennell, it was time to move on from Rennell. Have the courage to say that or pitch it in a way that doesn't send her down the river and sell her out because that's what I felt. So it's not even so much about whether she's going to be at the ballpark next week, although I'm with you, that kills me that she won't. But... If we're going to talk about 24 years, then then don't 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 do her like that on the way out the door. I agree. That's what I'm saying. Dayton just tied it up. I'm going for eight. You got to be kidding me. I'm going for eight. You no, just baby. said they were getting blown out. This is happening. I all just heard everybody shoulder. cheer in the other room. They tied it up. They were down by 14. Yeah, it's a 14 nothing run. Uh, let's go, 14 Dayton. Nothing run. Actually, check that. 17 nothing. Let's run. go, Flyers. Nope. Nevada just broke the uh, run. Take I back. shouldn't look. As soon as right. you said something, it. here comes Nevada. I jinxed it. Yeah, Nevada's winning this game. Do you have the Blake Snell thing, Mark? Hit the Blake Snell thing. This is how you should answer. So what do you think about the tenderloin? Go ahead. I don't really care where I played, honestly. Once the season starts, you're so locked into the every day of what you got to do to get ready. And that would be more of a question for my significant other. She got to live there and figure out the city. So I, I kind of talked to her more about that. Uh, San Fran, she liked close to home, close to her loved ones. Um, so there was that. But for me, I'm at the field every day. It doesn't matter what city I'm in. Uh, I know I got baseball and I'll be there all day anyways. So um, it was more, you know, how are they going to treat me? What's the clubhouse like? Uh, how's the fan base? How's the coaching staff? Hey, uh, I hope Mrs. Snell is able to navigate Lafayette. Dude, I hope, I, seriously, he could afford a bodyguard and hopefully she can get from Lafayette to Walnut Creek safely. Go ahead. I've been Sorry. saying this forever about the city and players. You pull into a guarded players lot. The the families go up to a suite. The families wait in the tunnel after the game. You go to the guarded players lot. You get in your car and you drive to Danville. Yeah. Like it, it, you, it, as a player, I the city. It's not like I'm going jogging through the city. It's not like I'm gonna live in the city. You you you, you have to have space from the ballpark to decompress on the way home. To lock in with your tunes on the yeah. way there. And to get ready for the game mentally, I could I could never live close to the park. I unless, unless, unless you're on the taxi squad, then then yeah. you got to be yeah. right right down. I got street. a message from a listener right now. Uh, do you? Yeah, it says I love you both. I will miss you guys so much. Yeah, from Rennell. Uh, yeah, she, she just messaged us. She's listening. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much got the uh, same text. We love you too, Rennell.